Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 51. So today we have Brittany Schaefer um, coming in from California. Uh, she's a libertarian, anti-statist. Uh, she's the daughter of Butler Schaefer, uh, sovereigntarian and property rights advocate. Um, and she is the author of uh, Urban Yogini, Superhero Who Can't Use Violence. And you can find her, her work on her website, Brittany.com, B R T. I G N E dot com, uh, and also uh, I think uh, you, you said your Facebook page is Brit just Brittany Schaefer. That's your profile. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and then on Twitter is at Brittany. Uh, so give her props for consistency. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so so we'll talk about her book and and uh, and her recent article uh, entitled "Must We Choose Between Mob Justice and the Police State," um, which also uh, discusses the private security agencies. Um, that has been popping up since, um, you know, since Detroit, basically. So, uh, so Brittany, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we heard uh, we've been hearing uh, some about you from uh, Rand. He's uh, he's been talking to you a little bit. He's like, you got to have this woman on. She's doing some great work. <laughs> so, um, you know, take the good uh, good advice from Rand. So, <laughs> so I guess, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your book and uh, you know what inspired yeah. you to write it and what it's so, about? Here's here's the book. It's um, Urban Yogini, a superhero who can't use violence. It's a um, it's a graphic novel. Um, yeah, what inspired me was, um, you know, just watching watching superhero movies. When you have kids, you end up watching a lot of superhero movies. <laughs> um, this one was that, I think I think it was Batman Begins, which is not really a kids movie, um, but just there there was a moment where it just hit me that um, you know at one point the cops because it's a, it's a corrupt city and the cops are the bad guys momentarily sort of, um, and it just hit me you know why there ought to be a superhero who is fighting the state. There ought to be, you know, all the, the sort of standard superhero scenario is usually, you know, the superhero is going after these petty criminals or the psychotic supervillain, you know, which doesn't really exist in real life that much. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you know, we're sort of we're inundated with these real villains in our lives every day and every, in every country, everywhere you go, there ought to be a superhero who fights the police who fights the state who fights you know the regulators and all that so so that's what urban yogini is um i added in i, I decided to because i wanted to introduce this it's not really intended for a libertarian audience it's intended for an audience of people who haven't really explored the ideas of the nap and so mm. it's it's really to get people thinking about that because that to me that's sort of like the biggest roadblock for people is they just and it's, it's so hard for me to understand you know why why is it so hard to get that it's not okay to initiate violence against someone you know why is that such a difficult thing to grasp so part of the whole part of writing this was just bringing up scenarios so her whole her whole thing is she's transformed into this yogini goddess who um, has to abide by the stricture of ahimsa, which is non-harming. It's not quite the non-aggression principle, but it's... It, close, it on, close you, enough. It's close <laughs> enough, and it forces, it forces you to look at those issues. It forces you to look at, you know, when am I supporting violence? When is there violence inherent in something that I might support? You know, in the same way that, you know, a lot of people who are into yoga or into, um, you know, sort of a spiritual lifestyle they they don't want to you know they might want to be vegetarian or vegan because they don't want to cause harm to animals and they're really exploring you know what are all the ways that i'm causing harm they just seem to have this tremendous blind spot when it comes to the state you know they're they're they want to look at all the ways you know i don't want to i don't want to wear leather because that means i've harmed a, a cow hmm. but i'm going to vote for bernie sanders to <laughs> take everybody's money and you know do whatever bernie sanders wants to do with it you know bob, bob brown people just like they all want to do, no matter what they say. Right, without, without you know, sort of acknowledging that that's what they're doing. Um, or if we vote for a brown person, then it's okay to bomb brown. I mean, <laughs> I, just, I, just don't, I don't understand how that reasoning works. I really don't. It's like it, it really does seem to be a blind spot. Well, and that's that's actually something I wrote about recently too. Um, I wrote a piece called "The Elephant in the Yoga Studio," and it's all about how in this this movement of sort of enlightenment and spirituality and concern for nonviolence and peace, there's this massive blind spot when it comes to the state um, that people just, and, and again, I can't make sense of it. I don't, I don't have the, the tools to analyze <laughs> what's going on in people. 
people's heads when when they do this but it's like there's just this massive blind spot and so that's what this this is to sort of a big part of it is addressing that is getting people to think about you know god maybe when i'm going out and voting for politicians to fix everything and to you know redistribute wealth and all that stuff maybe i'm participating in something violent yeah that's well i mean that's great um there's i i don't i i can't think of another graphic novel that does stuff like that <laughs> so that's really i mean I, i'm a, i mean i'm a big proponent of anybody finding avenues for for to be able to spread these type of messages um so that's a really i mean that's and i, I like the way that you the, the way that you put it that you 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 kind of put these things in there but you're not really like forcing it on them you're, you're kind of giving them ideas that and it's even it i mean that's the the seeds of liberty you know the name of our show the whole our whole idea is like planting seeds but you're taking it to an even more micro level because you're not even you're introducing the concepts without introducing the concepts which i think is which is 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 uh, i always think is is an even smarter move if if you're good enough to do if you're good enough to pull it off because trying that, to anyway yeah but yeah but that's it's it's awesome i mean i think that's great um there's i wish you know it's like i said all, all avenues need to be uh need need to be yeah, examined people, we have rap, we have rappers we have people we have pe plenty of people write but this is this is a di just a different avenue which again i think is you could totally you're totally going to hit a, a new genre that probably possibly doesn't get hit with any of the any of our other messages because they're not into these type of things yeah. um so that that's that's really cool <laughs> yeah i mean i hope it, i hope it i hope it gets read that's the, oh well that's i'm sure we'll we'll, we'll cool. try to help promote it every way any weekend any way weekend i'm always i'm always big on that you know anybody who does that's, that's that's actually that's, that's half the thing we do. That's half the half the time I do, half the time that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to promote my friends and other people's work. <laughs> it's not even our own stuff. I'm just like I spend all my time promoting everybody's stuff. I'm like, come on, somebody read this, somebody watch this, somebody listen to it. Come on, anybody. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, you know. That you know, like you said, you know, the way I look at it is like um, death by a thousand cuts. You know, one person, you know, um, tries to spread liberty through rap, through through um, poetry, through you know, writing books, writing articles. Um, you know, through through um, you know, like that comic or graphic novels, and also you know what that reminds me of is um, Connor Boyack. I don't know if you you're familiar with his work. He's um, he's a liber he's a libertarian um, from uh, Utah, and he uh, he writes um, children's books, oh, um, and uh, it's called the Tuttle Twins series. Mm -hmm. And he oh, wrote four. I have heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. it. That's yeah. his books. He wrote, he, he wrote four so far. I've. Uh, yeah, I've spoken with the guy. I've interviewed him um, twice, like for, for his first two books and then for his second two books. Awesome, awesome stuff. You know, like like you know, very little. You know, there's a, there's a big void in that arena with child's uh, children's yeah. literature. Yeah, well, that's actually my next project. I'm actually working on sort of a children's steampunk series of novels. Oh, that, cool. Again, not sort of explicitly, not sort of pounding home the message, but really just trying to introduce it in a story that stands on its own but the themes are there the themes of you know individual versus state and liberty and all that stuff so yeah i totally agree i think that's that's an area where it's it's just really missing i mean unless you go back you know a few generations there's some stuff but you know it's it's really hard to to find really explicit um kind of hardcore anti-state stuff in children's literature <laughs> Yeah. Actually, an, an, another thing I just remembered is um, the Voluntarist comic book series by yes, Jamie. Yes, yes, yes. Right? That's and I haven't. Um, I was, I was emailing back and forth with them, and I, I think I, I think I supported their their um, Indiegogo campaign. Mm. Um, and um, you know that looks awesome too. I don't know where they are with their project, but that's an, that's another thing that looks you know totally awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I guess along the similar lines as you, you know, the comic book, uh, you know, focusing on the comic book crowd. Um, yeah. which is great. You know, it's like, uh, I love it that, you know, we're, we're all doing what we can, you know, so, some people focus on the homeschooling aspect, the, the peaceful parenting yeah. aspect, you know, like, like you have kids like I do and Jeremy. So we, you know, that's where I kind of focus my message. I'd like to, to talk about that and interview people on my own show. And, you know, I interview as many unschoolers and homeschoolers as possible because so many people yes. ask me, like, I talk about this stuff and they ask me, well, you know, how does it how does it work? What does a typical day look like? You know, um, do you guys what curriculum do you follow? And and you know, I can give my perspective, but it's really helpful for them to see other people's perspectives as yeah, well. Yeah, it's nice to hear about it from from other people. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's one of the I mean, homeschooling and just getting getting kids out of the statist 
indoctrination system is one of the biggest things you can do. I mean, so much of, I mean, you know, when I'm writing articles, I feel like I'm banging my head against the wall because so many of the people out there have been, you know, they've spent their formative years being instructed by the state and being being taught why it's necessary and why it's good and why private individuals are evil and to be feared. And so, you know, when we come out and start writing articles, we're up against all of that. And it's, you know, it's like, how do you, how do you fight at that, at that point in someone's life? How do you turn somebody around? It's tough. It's unless they're already questioning it themselves. It's just, it's tough to start at that point when they've been through so much indoctrination. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, just like anything else, the long, the longer you have some, you know, the, the longer something sits a certain way, the, the more, the more comfortable you become with it. Um, you know, but I mean, I like to think that I'm a pretty good example of what can happen you know, because I was in my mid thirties before I started putting any of this together. Wow. Um, and and I did it. I mean, granted, like the one thing you did say, the the one thing you said, unless they're seeking, um, I kind of was, but I I I wasn't seeking what I found. Um, I mean, I've told this story in the show before. I set out to prove my dad wrong. <laughs> because I spent most of my life rather apolitical, but I was a registered Democrat just because both my parents were Republicans. Like that's literally <laughs> the only reason I was registered a Democrat, and I only voted in the in the in the presidential elections, and I always voted for Democrats. So Clinton was <laughs> Clinton's second term was my first vote, um, and then wow. and then who who was it? Who ran against Bush the first time? Was it Kerry or whoever it was? The Kerry thing, whatever. Like yes. oh, Gore, no Gore, Gore, Gore was the first one. Then the Kerry thing. So like yeah. and then and then. Even though I pick on Danilo all the time, the first time around, yes, I did vote for Obama too. Um, but well, good for you for turning around. That's so, wow. but but again, I I wasn't real. I was I was Rush Limbaugh's useful idiot. The people he always talks about on the left. That's what I was. I really was. But I set out to prove my dad wrong because he was a hardcore. He's a he's a well, technically he still is. I almost have him there um, now. But he was a hardcore constitutionalist, three percenter. Um, you know, former Navy. Um, really into his constitution, really into his founding fathers. Um, but he kept sending me, he was also kind of like a birther and was totally on the Obama as a Muslim, Kenyan, whatever train. Um, and he kept, he kept, set, he kept sending me all this crap. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to prove you wrong, old man. That's it. So my goal was to go out to prove him wrong. And the problem was I found out that, yeah, he was, he had some crazy ideas about Obama and like some of this stuff, but some of the other stuff he was talking about, he wasn't exactly wrong about. So I kept digging and then I got into the constitution for a while, but then I, I jumped past him cause I met somebody who introduced me to the word voluntarism and then asked me to logically defend the constitution. And I said, but how, what, what? Um, <laughs> and when I, 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 yeah, I tried to do that and I couldn't. Um, but yeah, so, you know, at, at 35 plus, I finally started putting the pieces together and I've only officially been, you know, I've only uh, like been calling myself an anarchist publicly for, you know, I think just under three years at this point. Wow. Um, a lot of friends. So was that? Did you lose a lot of friends? Oh yeah, yeah. I well, I unfortunately I went through the angry anarchist stage for the first year, <laughs> where I was mostly angry at myself. Mm -hmm. I was I was really angry at myself for allowing myself to be duped for so long and letting it happen and all this stuff. But I instead I internalized it for a while and then I externalized it on everybody else. It was misdirected. Right. And I would just like shake people and it's like, why aren't you getting this? What is wrong with you? Like I'm giving you all the information. It's right here. What the hell is wrong with you? So yeah, yeah I, I pissed off a lot of people. Um and uh <laughs> unfortunately. Um but you know, I, I, I've come around since. Um but it's you know, it's I so like I said, I, I think I, I think I, I, I give a per, I can give a perspective on that where it's it's possible. It's just a matter of you know, it's like I said, the longer you, you lo the longer you believe these things, the the more comfortable you come with it and the harder it is to shake, but And then the more your identity's tied up in it. So Well exactly. You, if you then turn around and question it, it's like, well, wait, I was wrong all those years or, you know, well, it just gets tougher and tougher. But it's, it's yeah, I mean, I, I keep running into people who, you know, like you, like mm -hmm. as adults yeah. discovered that there was a different <laughs> way of looking at things and that maybe they were mistaken about some things. And that's I, that's just awesome. I mean, it's just it's nice. It's just it's encouraging to realize that we're not all just drones and we're not, you know, just yeah. a product of our education and, and that people can change and people can think for themselves. It's it's nice. Yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, people always, you know, use the cliche what people can't change. Well, bull, bull crap. They fight. They can. They can. They can if they want to. That's right. that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I mean, I, I, I think I've come a long way. I mean, even though I was even a, even though I was technically still a Democrat back then. I mean, I was one of those after 9-11. I was one of those guys who was literally screaming in the streets that we need to turn the entire Middle East to, to glass. To wow. a parking lot, like I was that. I I had this neo neocon streak in me the whole time. I didn't realize that right. <laughs> that came out because you know. I mean, I lost a, one of my cousins was worked in worked in the towers, and you know, so I was pissed, and <laughs> I want you know I wanted blood. So so, but it. I mean, it's tough, but it is possible, and that's what you know. I understand when people do get discouraged when you run into these drones and you run into the people who just like mouth this rhetoric back to you and just they just repeat all they all they've been told and that's all they can tell they they can't step outside of that box because it hurts to do so um but you know so i understand it gets discouraging but i try to use myself as an example i'm like look at me i'm like three years ago you would have been slapping me upside my head and i'm like now i'm here i'm one of the i'm a huge advocate for it i do podcasts i do radio shows i'm all over the place like i'm talking i talk to people in the street because i have a pet sitting business and i i walk down the street i wear i wear different pins i wear you know i wear different shirts purposely (laughs) just try to start conversations with people because i wear stuff and people ask me questions i'm like hey you want to talk about this i stop and talk to them you know danilo actually got me under that because he just talk he'll talk to anybody anywhere wow. supermarket no but he'll just like he'll just strike he finds ways to strike up conversations yeah. and it, it's it's brilliant because not enough people think to do that and it, you're not being pushy you're not not necessarily proselytizing you're figuring out a way to like connect with them and it's you know because that's all you need to do because that's what it was for me somebody just planted a seed in my head and i said hey wait a minute yeah. That doesn't make sense. Now I need to know why that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, and it's probably more likely to happen if it's a one-on-one encounter versus, mm-hmm. you know, reading something on the internet or, you know, even somebody saying, hey, you should read this because nobody ever does. It's mm-hmm. just you know, you've got to be able to sort of connect with people and, and, and have that conversation with them. And that's where I'm – that's that's my weakness because I just get frustrated. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, you know, how can I <laughs> – if this isn't going anywhere, I think probably having been through that process, you probably have sort of more empathy for people and can yeah, I... <laughs> relate to them and, and sort of. Oh, I try to. I mean, I, I, I get I get to, I get frustrated just like everybody else. But I tr- that's what I I always try to stop myself and I immediately try to remember my position a couple of years ago. OK, I'm like, OK, you did this so they can too. just breathe, breathe, Jeremy, <laughs> breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you said, um, you know how how uh, you know people they, they live all their lives thinking one thing and then they find out there's a different option, and and you know you make it sound like so it's so radical and extreme. Whereas the different option is basically applying what you learned in childhood, which is don't hit and don't take other people's stuff, and you apply that to <laughs> adulthood. And like, exactly. how extreme is that? Like, right. and and right. not only it's that. Not, hard. Not only that, but you apply it to everybody. You don't make this giant exception called government that, you know, the exception of morality. You apply it to everybody. How revolutionary is is that? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think somewhere along the way, and I was, I I did a mix of Montessori, sort of a radical kind of private school and then public school. And so I kind of, I got a taste of all different sort Mm -hmm. of points of view kind of. And I remember distinctly in public school and the government schools having these lessons where, I mean, even at the time, I could tell the whole point of the lesson. There was there was this one this one time when the the discussion was about you know what is freedom, and um, I said, well, freedom is you know is freedom. <laughs> it's getting to do. And the whole point of the lesson was that freedom is not freedom. The whole point of the lesson was that freedom is going along, essentially going along with what the government tells you you have to do. It was the whole, you know, with freedom comes responsibility and mm-hmm. all this mm-hmm. stuff. And it wasn't just, you know, responsibility not to knock out your neighbor and not to hurt people. It was to go along with all this other stuff that society, meaning the government, tells you you need to do. So it's this, there's this whole process of inculcation. And, you know, I came into it late, but for someone who starts getting it in kindergarten, you know, I think what they start doing is equating society and family and all these things that you want to love as a child and that you're brought up in, they start equating that with government. And so you start to think of, you know, the policeman is your friend and government represents the people and all this stuff that people, I mean, in their hearts, 
so many of them really, really believe. And it's it just hard. It's really, I mean, as you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard to sort of get at that and say, hang on a second. This, is that really what's going on here? Yeah. And, uh, and then, and then, you know, talking about uncle Sam, how, you know, the government is just your uncle. He's just a nice guy. You know, he gives you some stuff that you need. He helps you out if you're, you know, down on your luck and, and, right. uh, he's just your uncle. We're all family. We're a big family and everybody takes care of each <laughs> other and your civic duty. And you know, that's it. Well, <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not taxes with the threat of violence and coercion. What are you talking yeah, about? No you're just, you're, you're just focusing on the negative. All right. Well, can right. you be positive? Just, just look at, be happy with what you have in life. All right. Stop focusing on the negative. <laughs> Be well, happy with what Uncle Sam does. Exactly. Well, you, you you can see you can see how effective that propaganda campaign was with somebody like Chris Rock, when he made that statement a couple right. of years ago yeah. about how you need to th you need to think about you know, Pre President Obama he's like our father and you know <laughs> and, and Michelle she's like our mother. It's like, yo, dude, what? No. Seriously, brother, I used to I used to have mad respect for you. You just lost <laughs> everything right in that one statement. Wow. But it but yeah. but, but, but you know he was. I, you know why he was trying to do it, but it's like that. But it's exactly what we're talking about—that mindset—it seeps in. I mean, it's because that's, that's all it is. It's propaganda. It's the same way that you know. Usually, it's the the conservatives or the Tea Party or stuff get very upset about if you don't if you don't stand for the flag, if you don't, you know. And they're also they're also the same ones screaming about socialism all the time. But you know, the flat the flat the stupid pledge they're all pissed off about was written by a socialist with the sole purpose of selling more flags. Right. Like what the heck, you know? Like, <laughs> and this is what this is what you people are concerned about. This is what gets you all riled up. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah. that's by design. That's that's propaganda. It's been beaten into everybody's head. It, it doesn't even have to be really beaten. It just has to be. It's just repetition. Yes. Yeah, over and age, over. Yeah. Identifying, you know, identifying yourself and your family with this institution, like it's just an extension of you. Mm -hmm. And it's not, right. you know, it's not that they have different, we all, we're all pulling together. You know, mm -hmm. we all have the same goal in mind. And, you know, when you question that, when, I mean, it's like, it's like heresy. It's like, that's the great taboo. You can't, you can't right. question that, you know, the government is not, you know, doesn't yeah. have our interest in, at heart. It doesn't you're, represent you're, us. I mean, you know, you're shaking, you're shaking their whole paradigm. Yeah, yeah. Confront that, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it has to be shaken. Know. It's got to be shaken. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty key. Can you can you uh, talk a little bit about your the recent article that you wrote? Uh, Must we choose between mob justice and the police? Yeah. State? So, um, so yes, yeah, this started. Um, well, it's, it's stuff I've been thinking about for a while. I write. I tend to write a lot of stuff about sort of civil liberties stuff, mm -hmm. and this one um, had to do with. I mean, it has to do with the whole idea of, you know, government police versus government monopoly police versus some kind of, of private, I don't even want to call it police necessarily, but security. private entities, security. Yeah, yeah private, private, security. private security. That's right. Well, I mean, that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's what you, no, you when, I describe, when I describe it, that's yeah. usually how I, that's just the word that comes to mind. So. That's, that's <laughs> because police, and as I, as I mentioned in this article, police, as we know it, policing is a pretty new phenomenon. I mean, it didn't really exist until, you know, police departments in the U.S. and in the U.K., started coming into being like around 1825 1830 mm -hmm. or so yeah. um, before that it was private it was i mean there there were these things called there were the night watch um which is sort of public but not it wasn't like a police department mm -hmm. and most criminal cases were handled privately they were handled by private entities you know it was sure. it was not at all the system that we have today so um so i talk about that um so basically the article the one i just wrote though why you know must we choose between mob justice and the police state i think a lot of times when we when you talk to people about um not reforming the police but abolishing police um people get scared because mm -hmm. they think you know oh, mob rule mob justice you know lynch mobs that kind of thing and when you look at the history of lynch mobs you I just mean, don't want any laws yeah right <laughs> <laughs> You know, you just you know you. You want just to want to do whatever you want. You selfish, you selfish, oh. selfish person, yo. <laughs> but you know, that's that's their only. For a lot of people, that's their only point of reference. Mm -hmm. They don't. They they've never been. You know, they most people haven't read Rothbard. They haven't been exposed to these other ideas, and so they think, oh my God, we take away the police. You know, as as bad as the police are, it would be so much worse without them. <laughs> yeah. Because people would go around killing each other, and you know, forget that that's not actually what happens. Like you know, in in the Wild West. The, quote unquote wild west you know, that's not what happened and yeah 
you know, people don't know that history. Um, what they do know is, you know, the history of lynch mobs in the South, which were horrific. I mean, if you read those stories, they were horrific. It was, you know, anything that ISIS is doing today, um, c- comparable, very comparable to what the lynch, lynch mobs did back then. I can sure. completely understand why people would say, no, we don't want to go back to that. The thing is, what pe- I think what people don't realize is that those lynch mobs couldn't have done what they did without the complicity of law enforcement. They were, Mm -hmm. you know, they were never, they were never prosecuted. They were, I mean, people went and they had their photos taken with, you know, people hanging from trees or from bridges. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I've I've seen those. Yeah, they they would take their kids and they would stand there and they'd have photographs taken. You don't do that if you're worried about the police coming after you. Mm -hmm. So it was widely acknowledged that um, the police, all of law enforcement tacitly supported what was going on. And in fact, you know, with a with a monopoly um, police, with monopoly law enforcement, um, that's kind, that's what happens. If they if they want certain crimes to be committed, if they want them to be ignored, they're in a position to do that. There's no competition. Nobody else is going to come along and prosecute. So, my my point in the article was, these things couldn't have happened if you'd had if you'd had free competition and security, this wouldn't have happened. You know, black Americans would have been able to form their own police forces. They would have been able to form their own security gangs or whatever you want to call them and protect themselves. As it was, they were disarmed. They were they were put in a position where they really couldn't even protect themselves. Yeah. And the law wasn't going to protect them. So, um, you know, and then I talk about this fantastic example from um, Tom Woods's interview, the Detroit Threat Management Center. Incredible. I mean, this guy... Um, goes into one of the worst neighborhoods in Detroit where the police won't even go there. I mean, people, he said there, you know, there were um, break-ins every day, murders every month um, in this one sort of square block area. He went in, basically said to the apartment owners, you know, look, give me, give me one apartment in each building. I'll station a a guy there to just to provide security. um, And that'd be the deal. And from the day they went in, no more murders. There was one more home invasion, but they caught the guy. Um, and he just talked, he goes into detail about, you know, how the difference between how his team works versus how the police works. Mm. They, they don't go around shooting. I mean, they can't. They're civilians. They don't mm-hmm. go around shooting people. They don't go around tasering people because they, you know, don't signal a turn. Um, <laughs> their, 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 their whole approach was interesting is he's, he said over the years, they've been doing this for 20 years now with, you know, amazing success. Mm-hmm. And, um, what he says is over the years, his approach has become less confrontational, less violent because that's what works. It mm-hmm. works, you know, there, there are ways to prevent crime, to discourage crime, to, to basically scare criminals away without confronting them without shooting them without without certainly without shooting innocent people um and you know it has it has to do with with thinking and you know being intelligent using your head and thinking ahead thinking about how you know how are they thinking um and it's just completely opposite to how how the police do it and um it's just the story is amazing i mean if you if you haven't heard the tom woods interview you know go to go to tom woods and listen to the the guy's name is dale brown and um he's the head of the detroit threat management center but it's just an amazing example of how this private organization even even in a society where there is a monopoly state they're able to go in and do a much much better job than the police were doing you know they don't they haven't they haven't killed anybody they haven't gotten any of their guys killed um they haven't had any lawsuits and they've just dramatically reduced crime in the areas where they've gone into. So it's just, I mean, that's, that story is just, to me, is just incredible. It's, it's, you know, this is, everybody needs to read this. Everybody <laughs> needs to be aware that this isn't theory. You know, this isn't, this isn't a bunch of anarcho-capitalists sitting around talking about how it worked. This actually is working. This actually is how, you know, how it's working. And it's you know, much I, 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 I read that article, um, I think they had an article or a transcript from Tom Woods. I didn't see the interview, but or the podcast or whatever it was, and they did talk about how the, you know a big difference is that that they are accountable to the law, whereas the police the aren't. state we have now basically aren't, yeah. and so they have to do things, you know, without violence. They can't, like she said, they can't just shoot people. So. But I, I wanted to key on that because I usually use – living in Vegas, I use the example of the security, private security in the casinos. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing basically. 
um, you go to any of the casino, there's cameras everywhere, of course, and there's plain clothes and uniform security people everywhere. But the thing that's really interesting is these guys and gals are the nicest people, the most helpful people. You strike up a conversation, you know, they treat everybody with respect and and you never see a problem. I saw I've seen a couple of arguments maybe in a casino where people got escorted out before it escalated. You know, I've never seen crime. You're talking about thousands of dollars in cash laying around everywhere. It's, you know, money everywhere. You would think it would be a high crime thing. Just and the there's opposite. no police. Yeah, it's it's private security and and the whole thing yeah. is the accountability. It's yeah. you know, and these they have to compete with each other and and they can't they can't piss off the clientele and they can't right. piss off the people that hired them and they're accountable to a lot of people and so they do a really 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 good job. Right. I mean imagine imagine if the private security folk in Vegas act behave like police i mean imagine if they right. spoke to the people there the way police do imagine if they you know walked around the way did if they were threatening and aggressive and yeah, yeah. You know, authoritarian. nobody would go there right they, they, <laughs> they, they, they've got a business you know. interest in treating people like human beings which is what exactly you know, that's what capitalism does that's what that's what free markets do is people's interests people's self-interests align so you've got an incentive to treat people like human beings rather than you know, right. the way to treat them. And, there, and, there's, and there's layers and layers of accountability. I mean, they have to treat the clients well because, you know, they don't want to drive the clients away from, or the customers away from the client that hired them. They have to compete with other firms and they're afraid for their own job with their own firm if they don't right. do their job right. right. So it's right. just like any of us I'm having a, a job and we got to follow the rules and do our job well, and you know, yeah, do what but, we're supposed to be doing. So, but, uh, but and even beyond that, they just they also they have to be actually accountable to the public at large too, where the police don't, right, because right. it's not just their clients. They have to. I mean, they're obviously going to put a higher priority on their clients in certain situations. But on the whole, like if even if they're protecting right. their client, they have to worry about. You know what? What in in police terms, military terms, would be considered just oh collateral damage. Whoops! Yeah, right, that doesn't right. exist. Collateral damage right. doesn't exist. Um, yeah, you know, they have to, be able to justify if they if they use violence, they've really got to. Be well, exactly, to and and stuff. and to go back to the to the threat management example, because I I did listen to that to that episode. Um, and I've known about them for a while. I did not realize they had been in business for 20 years. But that one story he told about the two drug dealers that everybody right. thought they had yeah. kidnapped, <laughs> yes. that, was yes. an awesome that was a stroke of brilliance. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, that yeah. was, oh, my, like, and he had me the whole time until yeah. he finally said, until he finally let it out. I was like, how did he do it? How did he pull this off? Like, I, I wasn't thinking like that. And it was like, oh, I was like. And he's, and, but you just like you said, he said, I mean, because he came from the military, so he started off thinking just like anybody else, might makes right, biggest guns, right. most guns, that's what we need. And he's realized that no, nonviolent ways go so much further, and they have such, they have such, they have a more long lasting impact. Yeah. Because the violent stuff, sure, you'll, you may get the results you're looking for in the immediate, but that's how blowback starts. And it's, right. that's not just something that it, that's just not just a term that people have made up about the Middle East. No, it exists everywhere. You keep right. pushing people. You keep doing stuff. That's when you have situations where people eventually can't sure. take it anymore. Right. But, the, you know, the other thing is and that the, the one great thing. I mean, well, there's a lot of great things, but I think one of the one of the greatest things about threat management is the whole idea. Like you were saying about how, you know, when you say when you say to people that we would want to abolish the police and they freak out like that's what you like because so many people just they haven't they haven't made the connections yet and they just go yeah we just want to get rid of it we want to get rid of it but when you tell other people that they freak out of course they're going to freak out so yeah. you don't you don't right. smash you know that's why i i disagree with a lot of the ancoms who are always talking about smashing the state it's like no i don't want to smash it i want to make it obsolete and that's how i try to that's how i try to show it to people that's how i try to explain it to people exactly and you show it them here you go yeah you know 20 years in business and now they're pretty much the only game in town because the city has abandoned them. The city has right. abandoned and, everybody. Yeah, and if there's enough enough people like I mean, at some point people are gonna have to start looking around and saying, wait a second, the police actually aren't aren't doing a job good job here. These guys are actually cleaning this up. They're what's going on, you know, what mm -hmm. what did I get wrong? Right. What did I not understand about how things work? 
Yeah. And then they're gonna and then they're gonna realize, wait a minute, do we even need the police to come back? Well, <laughs> you know, you can hope without them, right? And and uh, in addition to to the private security agencies, uh, I think what's worth mentioning is is a lot of the other um, technologies that are that are springing up, like Peacekeeper, and yeah. Uh, yeah. and al- and also four. I don't know if you heard cell the cell, cell cell four one yeah cell four one one right cell four one one yeah I just heard about uh, that and uh, and it's a similar thing with Peacekeeper as, or, and also like Bamboozer, but then then it takes it to another yeah. level. Well, Peacekeeper, as far as I know, never really actually took off. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I've had it on my phone, but I don't think it ever really. Yeah, I've but been in contact. Peacekeeper, I think it's up to you to sort of form your. Yeah, own you network. got it. Well, the, uh, cell four one one, you do too, but cell four one one is just yeah. a newer one, and it appears to have some more bells and whistles that people are more interested in. So it, it's get, it seems to be generating more interest in some, immediately than than Peacekeeper did. I, yeah, I've been in contact with some of the people from cell four one one because I wrote a pretty extensive article about Peacekeeper last year, and I still see it circulating around once uh-huh. in a while. And I just re- they contacted me through Facebook and said, well, it, it kind of is defunct now. It never really took off. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But this new cell 411, like 20,000 downloads now or something. Yep. And uh-huh. uh, a guy put me in contact with the guy that's running the whole show on Facebook. And I'm right now I'm compiling resources because I'm going to do a whole new article on what they can do. But, yeah, it's awesome. the same thing. You, you, you put your own emergency response network together neighbors you know family whatever people that have your best interest in mind right. you know and and it, like i know on peacekeeper they had like four different kind of alerts because you could do an emergency you could do um, fire you know, like a break in a fire, fire a medical, medical emergency yeah. and you could have specific people like say right. say your neighbor works as a a nurse or whatever or you you know you have a brother or whatever uh, you have specific people depending on what the alert is, and all you have to do is tap one thing on your phone, and it sends this emergency. You know, I'm having a heart attack or whatever, and the proper people, without the police being called, will show up to take care of you, and you don't have to worry about you know being shot or dragged to jail, right? For, you know, because you got the wrong plant or something. But hmm. um, <laughs> so that was my understanding of Peacekeeper, and I guess it. For whatever reason, it oh, hasn't really taken off. But the, the cell four one one, they have a Facebook page, cell four one one two. Also, not four one one two, four one one also. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's I just well. heard about that this week, and I'm going to try to compile some resources and get an article put together about that. Cool. Yeah, yeah um, that's r- another way that the market is is stepping in and saying this isn't working anymore. So yeah. what can we do? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Rand, please um, put me in contact with the person who runs the for- cell four one one because I I would love to interview the person. Oh, for okay. My, um, for my show, I don't have it in front of me. Because, yeah, 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 later up, on. But, uh, yeah, late, because I did interview Cody Drummond about Peacekeeper. Yeah, and that was a fascinating interview, and the guy was really awesome. Um, I have it, one or two videos with him in that article that I that I wrote. I'm not sure if it was with you though. Yeah. So. Yes, it's yeah, really but... fascinating stuff, and I, and I think this is, it's just the beginning, you know, I, I think people are realizing how much of a failure All police right. are. And, I've, you know. I've, I've been told that his name is, well, it's a f- Virgil Vaduva, oh, right. V-A-D-U-V-A. Mm-hmm. Oh, right, right, right. Um, That's it, I yeah. hooked up with him through Facebook. He accepted my friend request. Cool. Um, cell 411 smartphone app. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm hoping to get whatever information I can, but that's his name. Cool. Um, yeah, help him promote it, you know. You know. Well, I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll put all this stuff, I'll put the links to their stuff in the notes. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, you, you were saying about, you know, what happened with Cody's project with Peacekeeper and everything. It's like, I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate that his didn't take off, but that's, this is exactly the type of stuff that this is another thing to be able to show people. It's like, okay, right. yes, exactly. You know, it's the same thing that people talk about Bitcoin, Bitcoin all the time. Like there's some people that are convinced right. Bit, Bitcoin is going to be the end all be all. Most people that are smarter than that go, no, the technology is awesome, right. but it may not end up being Bitcoin. It may be something else, another coin somewhere down the road, whatever. Um, but or this, something that uses that as a stepping stone. Exactly. Right. But right. that's how we get right. to these things. When, right. when right. these, it's an when, amazing step towards something awesome. Yeah, this, but this, is, this, is, this is what happens when the market process is allowed to run virtually unhampered. Because right. most of the yeah. stuff is taking place. The development of these pro- pro- projects is all taking place underground. 
You know, it's not they're not worrying about government regulations and all this BS. They're finding ways around it. And this is what happens like this is this is anarchy in action. This is the free mark. This is the free market process being allowed to operate. I mean, Uber, Uber is this great workaround. Yeah. Yes. Stupid licensing right. taxi medallion systems that have, you know, that have limited people for, for decades. Sure. And these guys come around with this. It's essentially just a workaround mm-hmm. around something stupid. And <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, there's a there's, there's another. I've talked about this before. There's another one that's similar to Uber that's called Wagon. I happen to own a Toyota Tacoma and Wagon app is like truck for hire, like somebody needs you. Needs oh, to yeah. move something or, or whatever, ah, and cool. they, they I, I really would like to get involved, but it's illegal here in Vegas, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> I, get I out of town! I, Something's illegal. I, I found that out accidentally because I actually several years ago got a hold of a guy on Craigslist. I needed to move something. He had a pickup truck, and he says, "Yeah, I, you know, I put my I put my ad up for a day or two, and then yank it back down because they're cracking down." And I'm like, "Cracking down? Cracking down on what?" He said, "It's hmm. illegal." To hire yourself and your truck out to people without a license, without a permit, all these things. Right. So you got to pay all this stuff first. So yeah. it's actually illegal. So Wagon, I guess, can't expand here because it's actually illegal to do what they're trying to do here. They just recently allowed Uber in. You know how they allowed Uber yeah. in? Yeah. $500,000 yearly renewal on their permit. <laughs> Half a really? mill. Sure. Yeah. yeah they're, sure. They're cutting. They. they Something like that recently happened with the LA airport too. So I'm sure, you know, they're getting some kind of cut. I actually need to get going. Um, that's fine. I need to go do family stuff. No, no, that's fine. We really, listen, we really appreciate you giving us the time. This was a great conversation yeah, and thank you sure. so much. So, yeah. so please, before we go, can you plug your, um, your content again? Yes. yes. So Urban Yugini, yes. um, a superhero who can't use violence. Uh, it's on Amazon right now. I ultimately would like to get a, a Bitcoin site set up on my own website so people can buy it with Bitcoin. Sure. Um, not there yet, <laughs> but you can get it on Amazon. Okay. Um, I'm also working on an ebook version of it, so that there will be a Kindle version pretty soon, the next month or so. Um, my website, uh, www.bretigne.com. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Any, any, uh, uh, we'd like to ask our guests before they go, uh, your favorite quote, all time favorite quote, all time favorite quote. Let me see if I can say the whole thing. I might have to cheat. <laughs> oh. it's, what? Uh, no cheating. Hey, it, you, you have an answer right away. That's better than most people. So go for it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Google, long one. Google is not allowed here. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's the Will Durant quote, and it's actually on my blog. Okay. Um, okay. Civilization is a stream with banks. The stream is sometimes filled with blood from people killing, stealing, shouting, and doing things historians record. While on the banks, unnoticed, people build homes, make love, raise children, sing songs, write poetry, and even whittle statues. The story of civilization is the story of what happened on the banks. And that's from Will Durant. Wow. Very nice. Very cool. I never heard of that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, he's he's pretty he's pretty awesome. I kind of more on the democratic socialist side of things, sure. but um, pretty cool historian. Yeah. Very uh, independent thinking and got it right on on a number of things. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Well, Brittany, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. For me. Yes. So, All right. Great. Take care. Great. Take care. Uh, awesome. <laughs> so. So, so, so I just wanted to say about the um, about the Uber and the Lyft and the Airbnb. You know, those those um, companies. They, you know, what I love about them is that they started without asking for permission, mm-hmm. right? They just started. Right. It's like they didn't look. You know, they didn't. You know, say, is there a license? Is there something we need to pay? You know, they just started, <laughs> and then the states were like, okay, this company has started. What do we do about it? Do we tax it? <laughs> right. Do do? <laughs> and 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 that's one of the things that I rant about all the time is it's gotten so upside down that now it's like it's illegal unless we say it's legal, which is kind of like the exact opposite of how it should be. It's like, well, you know, we don't know if we're going to allow it. You know, it's like, well, if there isn't a law against it, it's not illegal. It's not the <laughs> other way around. Well, it isn't legal until we right. say it's legal, and it's just so upside down. <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Yeah, I think that's it's the like, legality equals morality argument. Yeah. Know? All right, so so I was um, I was uh, walking around with a homeschooling mother this one time. <laughs> of course kids. you were. <laughs> and then we were we were at this lake, and then the kids were like were like going near the near the water, and then she says to me, 
wait a minute, is this legal? <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because it's like ever since I've been studying voluntarism and anarchy and reading up on it, I never think in terms of legality anymore. Never. I just don't. I don't ask that question anymore. Is this legal? And it's so funny that it's amazing that so many people do, and that's on the forefront of their minds. Like everything they do, wait a minute, is this legal? Is this legal? <laughs> what I'm doing? Yeah. And it just yeah. struck me, you know? So. Um, <laughs> But uh, but all right. So so if you guys um, wanted to uh, give your final remarks uh, before we wrap up, uh, Rand, do you have anything you want to uh, say? You didn't get to say. You didn't get to say a lot. I, I I'll say th I'll say thank you for filling in for Dave. Oh um, no, actually actually thank you guys for <laughs> having me come in and uh, anytime anytime that you guys need a sub. No, I'm no, definitely available, and I've got all the equipment now. So uh, if you guys have me. Oh no, we'd 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 love to have you again, definitely. So definitely, but thanks for having me on. I I enjoyed. It. Well, I'm glad that we got Brittany because I'm a big fan of hers. No, well, th 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 yeah, well, and again, and thank you. You're the one who you're the one who set that up for us. So uh, it was it was really great that you know you were that not not only that you were able to fill in for Dave, but that you were able to hook us up with a guest with a with a very interesting <laughs> guest too. So that was really cool, man. I that was uh work, no, worked was out great pleasure. all around. <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. So. Um, well, I, d I just want to say, uh, since we forgot to, to forgot to say it at the beginning, um, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT No Government License. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about that at BIPCOT.org. Um, and again, uh, it was great having Brittany on. Um, that was, uh, I thought it was a great conversation. I'm going to make sure I go out and get her book. Um, and uh, it was great, have it, great getting to talk to Rand again. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll definitely have to do it again soon. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I know Jeremy is very appreciative of seeing somebody other than Dave on the other window. So, Absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot, Rand, for being. Uh, I've got <laughs> some big shoes to fill there. It's a big beard to fill, but it's okay. Finally, yeah. <laughs> we finally see some, we see the other person's chins. So that's good. Yeah. I'm trying to do my floating head imitation here, but maybe you can kind of see me. Uh, <laughs> Dave's got that down pat, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome conversation. I really enjoyed talking to Brittany as well. I never heard of her before this. Really? Uh, before you told us about her. Um, and and the uh, and the book I never heard of that book too but uh, I think I think I am gonna contact her. I definitely want to get her on my show because I think uh, yeah. you know I love I love to support these content creators because you know they all use their unique talents to uh, spread the message of volunteerism and that's what we need you know definitely we need to yep. show the creative aspect of uh, of volunteers and anarchists you know we're not just like anti-state you know you know police sucks right because uh, cause, cause cause sucks. The, I mean the avenue you're talking about there is reaching people through culture. Right. Rather than just, you know, reading an article or watching, a, you know, a speech or something. But right. it's going to impact people more through the culture. Yeah. You're starting to see films now coming out. And and so, yeah, the graphic novels is part of culture. Sure. Yeah. The music. Uh, you've got the um, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry one. Uh, yeah. yeah Jerry one doing his music and stuff. So hit him hit him on all sides. Yeah. Yep. All right. Awesome. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, for for listening. You can support us at Bitcoin, PayPal, or Patreon. That's Patreon.com. Slash no more, no more, pay, no more PayPal. No more PayPal. We got rid of the PayPal. Oh, PayPal. Sorry about that. I'm thinking about my show. So just, just Patreon <laughs> Bitcoin, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin and Patreon. Sorry about that. Forget the PayPal. But, li but like, 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 share, and uh, spread our content. That's yes. actually that means more to me than anything else. So if yes. uh, if you like what you see in here, please uh, pass it along. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you want to make Jeremy smile, please please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> All right. Awesome conversation, gentlemen. Thank you very much. So this All is the right. Liberty Podcast. Um, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. See you.